So we want you to be more aware of what your beliefs are and the power of them and whether they harmonize with your desires. A belief is just a thought that you continue to think. That's all it is. It's just a practiced vibration. And so if you've got practiced vibrations about your desires, but contradictory practiced vibrations about how you don't believe that, then you're not gaining ground. And if you're like most people, you become discouraged and then you look for other reasons to explain why it's not going better for you. As you compare the results, the manifestational, actualizing, materializing results that others are getting as they are turning their thoughts to things, as you only measure the results, you do yourself a disservice because you have no way of knowing what their thoughts were that produced those results. So we are not encouraging you to evaluate your method by what others are accomplishing. We encourage you to evaluate your method by how you feel, by what you're doing with your energy. Because if someone else is getting really good results, it's a sure thing that they're not splitting their energy. And if you could get up close to them, you would hear them saying things like, I really like that and I'm really looking forward to that and this is a really good thing. And you would not hear them saying things like, I'm not sure and I don't know what I'm doing and I can't figure out how to do this and life is really hard and I really want that. But you wouldn't be hearing that from them. But if you're not aware of your own emotions, if you're only listening to words that people are saying and only observing the results that others are getting, then you're not giving yourself the opportunity to really understand what's going on with you. And what's going on with others really doesn't have anything to do with what's going on with you. You are the most technologically integrated society that has ever been, which means you've got your nose in a lot of places that does not serve you. <laughs> we really think you should call it nose book. And so by giving so much of your attention to things that you don't have any control over really, you're just observing them, then you practice thoughts. You continue thoughts that often don't serve you. So deliberate creating requires deliberate thought. And deliberate thought requires a sensitivity to the way you feel. And a sensitivity to the way you feel requires understanding what your emotions mean. And so we can put it to you really, really simply. When you ask for something, which we call step one, contrast causes you to do that. Step two happens, which source becomes a vibrational match to what you're asking for. When you ask for more money or for a relationship or for an improved anything, your inner being becomes the vibrational equivalent of it. When you ask, it is answered. But it is answered in a vibrational frequency a vibrational frequency that has a point of attraction that begins to attract the cooperative components. But unless you are in the same vibrational frequency, you're not privy to, you're not aware of, you're not part of, not quite yet, the awareness of the attraction of all of these cooperative components. So for a while, in order to get you to understand this vibrational world that we are wanting you to understand completely. We explained about step one, you got that. We explained this about step two, it's answered. You didn't really get that because you couldn't understand why, if it was answered, why you couldn't see it yet. So we began to describe to you that it's happening, it's being answered in a vibrational realm and you don't like that because it sounds like smoke and mirrors. It sounds like we're just trying to trick you into believing that you're getting what you want even though you can't from your own resources see it. But we want you to understand that vibration precedes the manifestation. And once enough vibration is amassed, then it gets big enough and big enough and big enough that eventually you may begin to translate it through your own physical senses. So there's this vibrational reality that has amassed. It's so important that you believe in this vibrational reality. We gave it a name. We call it the vortex. The vortex of attraction is this swirly mass of energy that is bringing to it all things that you have asked for. Wrote a whole book about it, so you'd think it was real. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
And you began to sort of take our word for it a little bit, but we began to hear you say things like, all right, Abraham, you've talked about this vortex. Esther's pointing her arms at this invisible stuff over here, and your voice gets louder and louder and happier and happier as you talk about this vortex of creation where everything you want is. Just tell me, how do I get my stuff out of the vortex and into the bank? How do I get it out here where I can see it? And then for a while, we said, go in there. Go in there where it is. Go in there where it is. Well, you just kind of freaked out over that. <laughs> You made imaginary doorways and walked through them. I'm in the vortex, you said, but none of you really believed the vortex, even though it is real. And we get it. You want to see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it. You want to prove it through your own experience. And we want you to, too. In fact, that's why you're here in these physical bodies. You came to be on the leading edge where thoughts do turn to things. You came to materialize ideas. Your earth was once a swirling mass of vortexual stuff that you couldn't see, and now it's something that scientists see and understand and measure so much that was once only a thought is a physical reality that's what this is all about here this time space reality where you are the genius creators who now turn more thoughts to more things so to help you out in this process of turning thoughts to things we're explaining to you that here are the things that you want, the experiences, the creations that you've put there, bit by bit by bit. So incrementally, by the way, that you often don't even recognize them in their mature state. Here is more in your vortex than you could live in 20 or 30 lifetimes. That's how masterful you are as sifting through contrast and creating this vortex. But now, these thoughts must begin to turn to your things in order for you to have the fulfillment of what you've been intending. So now we're explaining to you that the vibrational frequency of this vortex is very high and very fast and very pure and is being tended by your inner being, by source or whatever you want to call that non-physical aspect of you. And you, if you want to open that passageway, if you want to open that channel, if you want to be the one who receives, if you want to be in the inspired place, if you want your timing to be good, if you want to be tuned in, tapped in, turned on so that you can translate the frequencies, because remember, you can't set your radio dial on 98.7 and hear what's being broadcast on 101. You cannot receive something that is a different vibrational frequency. So you have to understand the frequency of your vortex and you have to bring yourself to match that frequency. Ooh. And when you do, thoughts begin to turn to things and you begin to get ideas. You say, oh, I got the best idea. And the reason you did is because you were, it may be only for a moment, in the frequency of the vortex and you allowed this to transfer. You allowed through this open valve, you allowed this knowledge to flow to you. That's what's going on right here, right now. Esther's wide open and allowing that which we know to blow through her in a way that you do not often hear the likes of. Streaming consciousness because she's in vibrational alignment with what's in the vortex, with what's in your vortex, and here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. In the form of thoughts that she's receiving at an unconscious level and words that she's speaking also at an unconscious level. And the next phase of all of that are thoughts turning to things. In other words, this is how everything comes to you. Resources are not being trucked in from other planets. Have you noticed? Have you seen any pipeline in the sky? <laughs> there is not one. It's the resources of this time-space reality in combination with the powerful new thoughts that you are discovering, causing you to allow your new world to continue to evolve. And so that's what we are about with you. We want to help you find processes, understanding that helps you to want to sift through your thoughts in a more deliberate way. We want you to say yes to more things and no to few things. Because when you say yes to something in this attraction-based universe, you're saying, yes, come to me, this thing I want. But when you say no to something that you don't want, you're saying, yes, come to me, this thing I don't want. Because there's no such thing as yes and no in a vibrational universe. There's only attention to the subject, you see. So now you have heard 
everything that matters. You've heard everything that matters for you to live happily ever after. And by that we mean for you to experience the success of alignment, the success of alignment, which produces for you clarity and a really sweet spot as you get to witness the universal forces helping you turn your thoughts to things. We're eager to talk with you about anything you want to talk about. There is nothing off limits. We will help you in achieving a vibration that makes you more ready to be the receiver of the understanding and the manifestations that you seek. Don't worry about it if you are not specifically called on because we are understanding what each of you wants. And there are some of you who are ready to ask a question for many. We may very likely call that person to ask that question for many. But it is our promise to you that whatever is active in your question will be answered here today. There is a slight question about whether you'll be in the vibrational place to hear it. <laughs> but it's going to be a really good day.